follow me. These two simple words changed the life of Levi. Levi, who we know as St. Matthew. Levi, who ultimately left his custom post, who left everything he knew as normal, to become a missionary, an evangelist, a disciple, a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two simple words. Follow me. At this Catholic Men's Conference, I was praying about this opportunity to preach. I know when some of you may have signed up, you signed up because you thought that Cardinal Tobin was going to be here. Well, Pope Francis moved him, and you're stuck with me. <laughs> As I thought about the opportunity to preach to 800 plus men, I felt very convicted to speak about a topic. A topic that's unheard of. A topic that's unknown. A topic that's very masculine. What is that? It's called the Catholic priesthood. Some of you may be saying, well, I'm a married man, Father. I don't, what are you going to inspire me about the priesthood? I've been married for 50 years. Some of you might be thinking, ah, I've been married for five years. I made a bad choice. <laughs> Some of you aren't married. Still got a shot. What is amazing is what most people think about a priest. I was at a Catholic school the other day, spoke to a hundred young boys. I said, let's do word association. I say priest, you just give me words. So I was like, priest. And they were like, holy. Priest, service, priest, sacraments, priest, nice guy. It's like, this is terrible. Like, let's be honest. I say priest, you say what? Eighth grader from the back of the church goes, loser. I said, keep going. Another one, lonely. Another one, fat. <laughs> P-H-A-T. Another one says, unathletic. Another one says, old. Another one actually said, wrinkly. What is your perception of the Roman Catholic priesthood? What is your perception of spiritual fatherhood? Because I'll tell you, it's probably completely wrong. A lot of people look at priests, and I'll be honest, before I became a priest. When God called me a priest, I was absolutely mortified. My parents took me to Mass every single Sunday, never missed, except for once. Camping, it was a Boy Scout outing. I came home, I lied to my parents and told them I went to Mass. I've been to confession about it, don't worry. But nonetheless, to me, a, a priest was like a cuckoo clock. He was like the bird that like popped out of the door, said Mass, and then disappeared. I never saw my priest. I didn't go to Catholic school. All I knew as a priest, it was said Mass. And for me, as a, as a young kid, that was absolutely boring. It was miserable. Why would anybody do that and not get married? When I went through pure puberty and began to realize that priests like chose not to have sex, like, to me that was like, oh my gosh. They must have been the dork in high school that couldn't get a girl and thought that if they did this, maybe someone would love, someone would love them. The perception that so many Catholics have of priests is so wrong. And I want to tell you exactly why you believe that. Because of Satan. Satan is the prince of lies, and he wants you to believe that priests are miserable, lonely, and chose this because they had to for some reason. The reality is, is that the Roman 
Catholic priesthood, my dear brothers, is absolutely a gift in our church. And it's a gift that you and I desperately need. Raise your hand if you believe that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. Raise your hand if you believe that a priest, the words of absolution, can forgive your sins. Raise your hand if you want a priest at your deathbed to hear a confession and anoint you. Satan hates priests. And Satan wants you to believe that priests are miserable, lonely, bored, and chose the life solely because they had to, not because they wanted to. Now you might say, Father, you might be happy, but you haven't met my priest. He's miserable. You want know what? I can guarantee you that he's not miserable. You're like, Father, come on, you haven't met this guy. No. I got data. Seriously. Let's talk about this. Data. This is from the University of Chicago. You can check it out online. University of Chicago does uh, <coughs> pollings and studies. This is uh, top occupations with job satisfaction. Do you know who number one is on the list? Priests. Now these two men can attest to the fact right here. And the priests who wouldn't come out because they love hearing confessions so much. There's supposed to be like eight priests at Mass today, but they won't stop hearing confessions because they love hearing confessions. They love absolving your sins. So dead serious. In the United States of America, if you want your child to be happy in their job, and, and not and this is actually job satisfaction. Second list, top occupations in general happiness. Do you want to know who makes the top of the list? Priests. Do you want to know who's number two? Firefighters. We got something in uh, common. It's called putting out fires. <laughs> One just happened to be the fires of hell. But I'm serious. You check it out yourself, people. What do you... And this is... I'll be honest. I believe it's one of the great errors that we have in Catholic education right now. And the fallacy that so many of us Catholic men have indoctrinated into our children... You go to school to get grades, to get good grades. You get good grades to get scholarships. You get scholarships you get to, go get, to go to a good college. You go to, a, go to a good college to get a good job. You get a good job so you can make money. Because if you don't have money, you won't be happy. Grades, scholarships, college, job, job, money. Money, happy. That's from Satan. When did we begin to believe that money makes you happy? We're Christian men. <clears throat> Jesus, who came to this world encouraging us to shed our possessions, had a borrowed cave that he was born in and a borrowed grave. He couldn't even afford a burial plot. And yet we're convinced that if our sons and daughters are financially well off, that then, then they'll be happy. Has money brought happiness to your life? When your mother or your father has passed away, or your grandmother and your grandfather has passed away, and their properties get divided, does that bring unity and joy and happiness to all the kids in the family? Does money bring happiness in this world? What brings us happiness? Love and service and joy. The great thing about a priest, and I mean this is when it comes to job satisfaction and happiness, is the fact that like, it's not my job. It's my life. My life every single day is to stand 
in the place of God and to reconcile people to the Father, to stand in the place of God and to give the flesh and blood of Christ to the world, to stand in the place of God and to anoint and to bless and to baptize and to preach and to teach, that's life-changing. Our Lord says, follow me. My dear brothers, Father Eric Augustine here is the vocation director of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. It's his assignment to help young men find their vocation. But he will completely and totally agree with me that he can't create vocations. In fact, he can't even find them unless someone tells them that they're there. What I want your take home today is this. Priests are happy. It's completely true. Nine, another stat for you. 93% of priests say that if they had to do it all over again, they would be a priest. 93% said they would do it all over again. The other 7%, 3% say they wouldn't do it again. The other 4% either leave the priesthood or get kicked out. 4%! What's the divorce rate? How many of you have lost jobs, changed jobs again and again? And I'm not saying that to condemn you. But I say that because I don't think we think about what the priesthood is what the priesthood can be for our sons, our grandsons, our nephews, and the young men in our parish. And it is your responsibility, brothers, to encourage and invite them. When you see a young man in your parish, I encourage you to say a prayer to the Holy Spirit and go up to that young man and say, Jim, you have great virtues and qualities, and I want you to know that I think you'd make a great priest. If you've never thought about that, I want you to pray about that. You should be doing that. These knuckleheads here, they hear it from me all the time. Right? This knucklehead right here is sitting on my right is actually a seminarian from our parish, Andrew Raleigh. He's uh, at Marion University studying the Bishop Brute College Seminary from All Saints Parish. But gentlemen, as a father, you are called to create fathers. And if God blesses you with sons, raise them to be good and holy fathers who will bring forth life into the world. But do not forget your role in raising up spiritual fathers in the church from your own sons, your own grandsons, but also from young men who aren't even related to you. For if there are no priests, there is no Eucharist. Without priests, there is no confession. Without priests, the church cannot be who she is called to be. And I challenge you in this as well. As a priest who, in the past 14 years, has been pretty excited and jacked up about vocation and vocation work. Who do you invite? I think oftentimes what I've found is that parishes look around, they're like, oh, well, there's that one kid going back once again to the lies. He's kind of awkward. He'd be a good priest. There's that one kid, he's weird. He'd make a good priest too. I challenge you to look at the best, the strongest, and the brightest. And to pray that the world doesn't snatch them away with the lie. 
that if they go to the right college and make enough money, they'll be happy. Because that's a lie. Now, don't get me wrong. Our world needs doctors and lawyers. Our world needs accountants. Our world needs good, educated men. I would be a fool to say anything else. But our world needs priests. And that's not just my role. That's not just the role of Father Eric. That's the role of every man in this auditorium. The two simple words given to Levi were follow me. There are men in this room today that God is calling to be a priest. I have no doubt about it. Who's going to invite them? Who's going to encourage them? And who's going to pray for them? My dear brothers, as we stand together, as we pray together at this conference, let's ask the Lord to inspire us. That we may be initiators of salvation by inviting and encouraging young men to be a part of one of the happiest and most joyful and life-giving ways to be a man. By being a priest. Amen.